zone before, so can they adjust, have some different sets, try to get their playmakers the ball? On the other hand, Missouri's got to feel pretty good about their game plan because they held AM to under 30% despite the road loss a few weeks back. Missouri's coming off of a Saturday loss at Vanderbilt. Tigers got off to a great start in that game. It started with the opening tip. They led by 11 early on. And after a hot start from the floor, then they cooled off big time. And that was the difference in suffering their ninth conference defeat. Noah Carter fires, but can't find it. Elway Taylor, the fourth with the rebound. Missouri played a lot of zone in their previous matchup with AM. They start man to man. It's that's to throw the Aggies off just a little bit, knowing that Texas AM probably coming out with his own offense set. Missouri throws the man to man out. AM averaging 73 and a half points a game. And there's a shot clock situation. Went back to 27. So two of the bottom four scoring teams in the league going head to head in this one. Ain't it? The Auburn Tigers to the NBC tournament. Shot clock was set to 10. Radford's got a hurry and he massages it in. He's such a physical guard. That's going up against one of Missouri's more physical front court players. Takes the bump, finishes anyway. A 1 2 2 look for AM here. Missouri without its leading score and starting guard Sean East, who gives them. Nearly 16 points a game. He's out with a knee injury. Spent some time with him. Ooh, that was a harder foul than it looked. Committed by Solomon Washington. Washington apologizes to Jordan Butler. Now we know the answer to uh, the bigger the tree, the harder they fall. An aggressive AM defense. They love to trap and be aggressive on this end of the court. Try to fluster the opponent with various defensive styles. They'll do some zone, they'll do some switch. Carter skips it over to Kurt Lewis, who lost it on his way in, but he draws a foul. And that's the second quickly at Solomon Washington. Guys like Kurt Lewis, who you have not heard from much this season from Missouri, have got to step up big with the absence of Shawnees. It's not going to be just one guy, it's got to be a balanced effort. Not only shot making, but playmaking for your teammates. East was so good at both of those. Washington hears from Buzz as he takes him out of the game here early on. Here at Missouri, they score until the Tigers hit their first bucket. This may be it. And it's drained by Kurt Lewis, former junior college player of the year. Lewis is a guy that was fifth in the country last year at 48%. In the Juco ranks, just six for 29 this season. Good to see him get one going if you're a Missouri fan. It's his first start of the season for Missouri. He was a starter in Eastern Kentucky coming out of high school in Louisville. Taylor a challenge deep two. And the loose ball corral by the Aggies. They are the best in the country at that. They pull down. 43% of their misses and so many of them are off long rebounds and you see those long shots by Taylor and it creates sort of a 50 50 ball situation where the defense is usually sucked in towards the paint those long rebounds can be advantage offense nobody takes advantage better than that Aggies, Aggies are able to turn those rebounds into 18 points off of offensive rebounds meanwhile Missouri one of the worst defensive rebounding teams in the league and an early foul on Boots Radford. He is such a difficult player to keep from getting downhill. Yes, he's a lefty, but he's very confident going to his right. That time probably wishes he would have thrown it up with the foul coming, but a good possession nonetheless for Texas A&M. That's what they do so well. Meanwhile, Willens Levesque takes a seat and the Aggies go back to their bench for the second leading rebounder in the league that's Anderson Garcia at just 6-7. And the loose ball stays this way with AM. Sean East at the top of the screen, by the way, working Doug Sermons. <laughs> and Sermons looks at him and he says, You can't do that. You've got to sit down. Sean apologized immediately. There's some of that zone by Missouri. This is what really rattled Texas AM last time these two teams met. Great contest by Butler on Garcia. They're going to get those openings in the middle. They've got to have playmaking. 
Diner through traffic. Missouri team that comes into this game shooting 45% from the floor, the second best in the SEC. But their two point shots have really struggled. Coleman in the paint. Mizzou rebound. That was a tip out. Usually goes AM's way. Now Lowitz with the circus. And Garcia finds the board. So I like AM pushing right now. Try to get it ahead before the zone is set. Three in transition from Carter. Much better. They just have not been good against Missouri zone. Getting the ball in the middle of the court is not where they have their best playmakers. But if they can advance past it quicker, you got a better opportunity to score. Both teams will do a lot of switching. Honor with the mid range, too. 63% of his shots come from behind the arc. And for good reason, Missouri has four players averaging double figures. A little high low, Garcia, maybe mid to low. That was a tight one as he found Henry Coleman the third. He's their best front court passer in that spot. It's almost like having a point forward. He's a good facilitator. Mar Bates hasn't gotten a shot yet in the Missouri offense. He's averaging nearly 20 a game in conference action. Good ball movement to Carter in the corner. Another three for Mizzou. Well, they're a different team when they're connecting from three. That's been their kryptonite in SEC play. Last 11 games, Missouri is shooting just 29% from deep. Ball fake and a drive. Radford hangs and will go over the free throw line. He has drawn two fouls early in this one. Both teams shooting 50% from the floor, as Dane suggested. We got a tight one here tonight. Skate's takeaway is hey, our game plan was right. The analytics, we did everything right to win that game, except the battle at the free throw line wasn't even close. That was the difference. But that's also what gives them confidence in this rematch opportunity. So here's Boots Bradford. He had 11 points in that previous matchup two weeks ago. And at the free throw line, rattles the first one home. He epitomizes what is a, an odd contrast with his AM team. They get to the line a lot, and it produces more points than most, but they're not a good free throw shooting team. Bradford just 65%, and as a squad, 12th in the league at 70 percent if they're even top third in the league you're talking seven eight more points a game yeah in fairness though they still lead the league in free throws made so it could be a greater disparity but no question offensive rebounds and free throws is the best part of this Texas A&M offense Carter gets caught on the baseline finds Anthony Robinson the freshman Bates takes his first shot and the Aggies come out with the rebound AM has missed three shots, one offensive rebound already. Taylor puts up an air ball. Well, and the other thing it this zone does is it makes AM get a little bit stagnant. And Taylor can make that shot, but it's a higher percentage when it goes inside out. When they just swing it around the perimeter, the percentages go down. Zoo breaks the press, gets an up close look, and it's blocked by Garcia. Anderson Garcia is 6 7. He plays 7 1. Here he is down the lane. No whistle there. Mizzou was straight up. No numbers. Robinson, the freshman, doesn't care. But it just won't go. And that's been the story of the season for Mizzou. Robinson disappointed there. Got to keep his head up. That was a great opportunity. They pushed in transition. That's how Missouri's got to help their offense. And that's been missing this season with some of those fast break points. Contested three. Kept alive, not one, but two taps for Radford. Taylor with the bounce to Garcia, and he'll draw the foul. I don't know that there's a better glue guy in the SEC than Anderson Garcia. Look at him get up high and deny that at the rim. He does so much for this team. As soon as he is in the game, it is just instant productivity. Known more for his rebounding, but that time, how about the shot block? So you could say he's a system forward. He's like the Brock Purdy of Texas A&M basketball. 
Well, and I think even if they got behind, he'd find a way to come back, despite any <laughs> stereotypes Purdy may have had before. Garcia knocks the first one down. He's only made three starts in 21 games this season. He is sensational off the bench. He's third in the country in offensive rebounds per game, second in the SEC, despite, as I mentioned, only being 6'7. Boots Radford gives him five and a half boards a game. He's 6'3. This is a small Texas A&M squad. So it, to put that in some more perspective, Garcia is right behind seven foot four Zach Eaton in <laughs> offensive rebounds. I, I'd say you're holding your own on that category if you're 11 or white. Well done. Noah Carter the rebound. Both teams have started this game three for nine from the floor. Carter at the elbow lost it. Not a great pass from Bates. Chance for the Aggies to push. Bradford finishes with the left. You're not wrong. Not a great pass from Bates, but you got to go up to that two hand catches. I mean, Missouri wants to attack this pressure from AM. Get it in the middle, make AM pay for applying this pressure. Robinson draws a bump from Wade Taylor. You know, that game in front of us. Alabama and Auburn is now a season high for free throws attempted in the SEC. Last check, they had shot 74. We're not on pace for that, but AM, I don't think, would mind. H, Kansas City native, gives it up. Back to Nick Otter. Connor Vanover shares it. It ends up with Bates guarded by Hefner. Shot clock at five. Honor, step back three. Got it! He has made two threes in six consecutive games. They're going to double check whether or not his toe was on the line at the next dead ball. Garcia knocked away by Robinson. Here's Honor. Lost Taylor. Got it back from Vanover. Missouri needed that one. Look how quick they get back on defense. Most teams hustle back and transition man to man, but they do a great job getting set in their zone. And there's that offensive rebound, second opportunities. And then AM gives it right back with a travel. The first matchup, AM only turned it over six times. So even though they are inefficient yeah. from a shooting perspective, they don't give away possessions and they garner extra possessions. Like your old friend Andy Kennedy used to say when he was at Ole Miss, he said, Look, we might lead the league in bad shots, but we're also going to lead the league in fewest turnovers. I'd rather get up a shot, at least he's got a chance to go in, than trying to pass it all around and end up with. Too many turnovers. AK always leads the league in shots. <laughs> Shaw into the corner for Bates. And an air ball from Tamar Bates. Look at the burst from Radford. Into honor. And he finishes. You described it well. Radford got that ball, and he can bring it up just as well as Taylor. When you got two type point guards, you don't have to look for an outlet pass. He just took it himself coast to coast. Honored. Knocked away by Coleman. There's one thing you're disappointed in right now if you're Dennis Gates. It's the Aggies shots at the rim. That's something they took away in that first matchup right now. Radford, whether it's in transition or in the half court, getting there too easily. That's like former AM great Amanda Scarborough without a rise ball. Here's Radford for three. Fourth offensive rebound for the Aggies. Taylor got it. He's got a really good floater. He's not as good when he goes all the way to the rim, but man, does he have a soft touch from the mid-range. Timeout on the floor, and really the numbers, 15 and a half points a game. He's the pace setter for this Missouri offense. Yeah, he's the one player that really makes the guys around him better as well. So not only do you lose the scoring and the three-point shooting, but the facilitating as well. By the way, they reviewed an early Nick Honor jumper that was right on the three-point line. Confirmed that it was a two and not a three. Missouri's looking for its first conference win of the season, a year after winning 25 games in the first year under Dennis Gates. Been tough sledding so far this year, beset by injuries. Without East tonight, and still without transfer Caleb Grill, who's been out since early December. There's Andy Obaski on the floor for the first time. 
Another offensive rebound. If you don't have the book on AM, it reads like this. They shoot free throws and they lead the nation in offensive rebounding percentage. Well summarized. That is the Aggie offense. Connor working on Hayden Hefner. Out to Bates, the hottest Tiger shooting lately, and he drills his first. Bates is scoring 19.8 in conference action. He's one of two players in the country to shoot 50% from the field, 40 from three, and over 90 from the three-point line. Here's Taylor for a deep three. Garcia all alone. Nobody got a body on him. His activity and his motor is up there with the best in the SEC. And now stolen by Taylor. Uh, the first shot defense for Missouri in that zone has been okay. It's the offensive rebounding and the fast break points that has given the Aggies the lead right now. Honor into the paint, little floater, not his game, but it works. He's shooting only 32% at the rim this season. He's going to have to make it his game if they want to make the Aggies pay for some of that pressure. Attack them once you get it over half court. And in six offensive rebounds, that's led to seven seconds chance points here in the first quarter of this game. Obasaki. No, and Aiden Shaw apply to get it. Here's Bates. Indiana transfer from the Kansas City area. His parents at the game tonight. Lewis. Too strong. And rebounded by Taylor. Hayden Hefner in front of the pack. Beautiful step. What a reverse by Hefner. Who's kind of fallen away from the scoring column. He hadn't even taken a shot in the previous two games. That's a heck of a play to go that full speed and then the body control to slow up the pace, get to the other side of the rim to shield the defender. Really nice play. This has not been a game of runs. It has been tight all the way through. Honor tees it up. Got another. Nick Honor stepping up in the absence of Sean East. And that's the spot that's going to be open. When you drive baseline, the Aggies sink and protect that side of the court. If you can reverse pivot and find the guy on the three-point line, you'll have some open looks. Honor averages 10 a game. He's already got nine in this one. Hefner in the corner. And a whistle on the rebound. We'll keep it this way for AM. Here's where the opening is. AM sinks so much down to protect that baseline help, and Honor does a great job of relocating. Good find, exactly how Missouri practiced that earlier today in shoot around. Good start for the grad student out of Orlando, Florida. Transferred to Missouri from another Tiger program, Clemson. Big win for the Tigers and a rare one at Chapel Hill last night. Radford working on Otto. Mitty, no. And foul. Play before was on Shaw. He gets the rebound here. And now Bates. No, the poor Majak with the dunk. And he's going to the line. That is the first field goal attempt of this season for the big fella. <laughs> How about Majak following up in transition. Getting himself in the scoring column for the first time all season. That's one way to do it. Runs up, big fella. <laughs> the foul was out of the a moment ago. Majak, whose only points have come from one free throw all season, now has got a three-point play. Transferred in from Cleveland State. How many times did he score in a game at Cleveland State? Oh, boy. Did you say he only had, He's like, only had 23 field goals his entire career? But 24 now, including the sedan slam. Put a good one over there. <laughs> you nailed it. Taylor got a bump and a half step. Challenge two. And AM loses it out of bounds. We'll go back to Mizzou. Tigers with the lead, thanks to, of all people, Mabor Majak. Did not see that coming tonight. Mizzou on a 6 0 run over the last minute. Missouri should be encouraged and even though that one a clean defensive rebound there were guys down there battling scrapping trying to keep the Aggies off the offensive glass. Anthony Robinson freshman in the backcourt alongside grad student Nick on. Bates has been the go to guy in conference play for the Tigers. He's well covered here now Robinson. Shot clocks at six. And lost by Shaw. And the second time a Missouri Tiger has tried to 
catch the ball with one hand. Like, get two hands on the ball, and you can secure it, because right now it's led to two turnovers. Aggies not having a great shooting night, but that's nearly by design. Good finish by Radford. They shot just 29% in their home win against Missouri two weeks ago. Near steal by Coleman. Shaw hard into Carter. It's the first on Carter, one point game here. We got six college basketball games to highlight our ESPN schedule Saturday. It all starts with a college game day crew at 11 a.m. Eastern. Number four, Kansas plays host to 13th ranked Baylor and a Big 12 Sonic blockbuster at 6 Eastern. You can always watch in the ESPN app if you're out and about. Kansas 17 and 1 in its last 18 home games against Baylor. They shot 70% against Houston in a rare game. Where Bill Self's team was a home underdog, according to the quote-unquote experts <laughs> on Saturday. Yeah, that didn't work out too well from the opening tip. But the Jayhawks looking to bounce back after that loss to overtime Tang. Coach Tang now 11-0 since taking over the Kansas State program in overtime game games. Unbelievable. 26 percent of his, his wins have come in overtime. <laughs> it, that is an insane number. Missouri retains possession 20 seconds on the shot clock Tigers have made five of their last seven Tom Hart Dane Bradshaw glad to have you along tonight what a fun night in the SEC Tennessee able to take care of LSU at home and Auburn split the series with Alabama and a convincing win in the jungle Shaw cut off two on the clock Robinson no oh. rebound to AM. Aggies plus six on the glass here tonight. Content to use some clock. 318th in the country in tempo. Taylor with the kick. And the three from the corner from Chase Carter. Taylor known for his scoring, but that's just a terrific drive, draw, dish. And it's always a danger when you leave strong side corner there with the open three. You went drive, dot, draw, dish, danger in one sentence. I thought you were going <laughs> dodgeball next. I'd like to get Noah Carter posted up on the guards. So Eli Drinkwitz was open. He stands on business. I'm a Tennessee <laughs> alum. I know. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> Sitting courtside tonight. Uh, I gotta be honest. I didn't know what stands on business meant until Eli pulled that one out. Good hands. <laughs> uh, today was National Signing Day once again for college football. He wasn't very busy. Missouri got all their done. There's done in the early signing period. Here's Honor. Can't wait to see where all those players end up over the next four years. <laughs> A lot of turnover these days. Here's Carter transition three. Look at Anderson Garcia. It it's the long rebounds that they're best at because they take a lot of long shots from the perimeter, and when it hits off the back of the rim, it's advantage Aggies with their smaller front court. He's got nine rebounds. Missouri as a team is ten. That one was way off. Shot that one to Ashton. And a hard foul from Otter will put Carter at the free throw line. Are you kidding me? That I mean, there's Garcia again. He's third best in the country at getting offensive rebounds, and he is just so active and I've never seen a player be more effective on the offensive glass but uh, over defensive but that's exactly what Garcia brings to the table. He's from Mocha in the Dominican Republic played his high school ball at Hamilton Heights in the Chattanooga area. They call him the Dominican Rod. Here's Jace Carter now. Carter's knocked down two threes tonight. He came in just five for 31 from three in conference play. Now this is what AM is all about. Second chances tonight. They've got eight to Missouri's two. Leading the country in offensive rebounds, leading the country in offensive rebound percentage at 43%. Well, on the other side of that is Missouri struggles in that category. Sean East, their dynamite point guard, their scorer facilitator in conference games, he's also their leading rebounder at four. That's not good enough. If you're Dennis Gates, it's like, guys, when that ball goes off the rim, it's got to be a battle. 
We've got inside position, go hustle, and they've got a small athletic lineup as well to try to win some of those 50-50 balls, even when they get odd bounces. By the way, Garcia has 10 rebounds in just 12 minutes. Honor found a gap, and then that was quickly closed, and he walked with it. Mentioned this earlier, Honor only shooting 32% at the rim. He is much more comfortable on the perimeter, but the Missouri offense designed, especially with Sean East, when he's healthy, having a point guard who can penetrate and then make something happen. That, that's right. That's one of the biggest issues right now for Missouri is who can make other guys around them better. And can you get Bates the ball? Because he's a guy that can make contested mid-range shots for himself. Hayden Hefner cut off, gets it back, will fire. Garcia again, knocked away by Bates. It'll be A&M basketball. Missouri played a lot of zone in the previous matchup. They've gone to zone a lot more. They're in the 80th percentile in zone defense. Their man-to-man -man has really struggled. Are you surprised we haven't seen more of it tonight? A little bit, even though I know it can be difficult to rebound out of that zone, I think it's made Texas A&M the most stagnant. But bottom line is, when you play Texas A&M, easier said than done. you got to try to make them one and done on the offensive end, and you got to try to defend without fouling. That, that is the key to the Aggies' offense. Aggies have been to the free throw line six times in this one. This match for Radford on Carter. Carter got a piece of it. Shaw able to squeeze that rebound. Bates tried to whip it inside. Intercepted by Garcia. And he has dominated this game, and he's only got three points. Here's Hefner with a baseline move. Second on Shaw. Anderson Garcia is leading the way for AM. He's got 11 boards, as many as the entire Mizzou team. Aggies lead by five. Another two from my fault because Dallin bothers me with vocabulary requests during games. Don't worry, I, I once accidentally butt dialed Tom when he was right next to me and it popped up as don't answer. <laughs> it's kind of awkward. Uh, <laughs> uh, sometimes oh, we don't to work with not you. supposed to share that information. Yeah. Uh, we don't smile enough at work, I was told. Yeah, you're, you're great to work with, buddy. No man left behind. You too, How Dave. was that Tennessee-Kentucky game <laughs> on ESPN last week? Times, great ratings. Yep. How about Tennessee, though? That was a monster win on the road. Uh, by the way, Kentucky has Gonzaga coming to town on Saturday. The Cats have never lost three consecutive home games, ever. Well, I think they've got a pretty good feeling locker room right now after that win at Vanderbilt. I know they were favored in that, but the way they shot the ball, defense was a little bit better, effort better, even without Wagner. Kurt Lewis, the foul. They get DJ Wagner back at point guard. That'll help. And as Kyle Perry talked about, it, like, I don't think they have to be elite defensively, but they they can just be 10% better. I mean, that that will be the difference between winning and losing for them. Because right now they they've got some issues, and even last year, like with Oscar Shibwe, they had the ball screen. Everybody was screening at Shibwe because that was mixing up coverages. And this year it's for different reasons, but they've got enough time to turn it around with this young freshman class. Henry Coleman, the third, re-enters. Washington takes his seat. Another free throw coming for Wade Taylor, the fourth. This is an A&M team that cannot afford a road loss to a Missouri squad that's winless in conference play. Aggies now with an 8 nothing run have opened up their largest lead of the game. Kurt Lewis getting his first start of the season tonight. If you joined us late, Sean East is out for this game with a knee injury he suffered against Vanderbilt. Hopeful to return soon. Bates for three. Skipped off. Here's 
excludes Bradford. Ian Taylor, the driving force behind this AM offense. Garcia looking for an assist. Coleman the flush. Outstanding interior passing by Texas AM. This is not a team that's going to beat you with their assisted mates, but that time was elite ball movement. Tigers haven't scored in the last five minutes. Not much spurt ability in the Missouri offense. They can't get down double digits and put that much pressure on their offense to bring them back with Sean down. A hold on the blackout charge to Wade Taylor the fourth. How about this passing? It starts with the penetration by T Taylor, who gets in there under control, and Garcia just looking off the defense and the dump down. That's your four man passing to your five. That's what you want to see, especially in the paint. Hefner returns to the game for AM. Aggies have won a couple of close games this season. In fact, their last six have been decided by six points or less, and they're four and two in that span. Huge advantage for them statistically tonight. They're shooting 70% at the rim. Yeah, that, that's the big disappointment if you're Missouri. And that first matchup against Texas Day and them when they were right there, they forced the Aggies to shoot over half of their shots from three. Right now, AM has corrected that, making a conscious effort to attack the rim. Another Aggie steal. That's the fifth of the game for AM. And Buzz uses a timeout with 2.10 to play. Step away for a quick one here. Aggies lead by a lot. Action this year, it's Notre Dame and Louisville. Tomorrow at 6 o'clock on ESPN. Talk about a tough schedule. The Cardinals, that's going to be their third of four straight ranked opponents. So no time to sulk or celebrate. you got to move on to the next challenge if you're Louisville. Notre Dame's men's program on the road at Duke tonight. There's been no program in the country more successful if you combine the men's and women's programs in South Carolina. The latest was 40 and 3. On Staley's team still hasn't lost. Lamont Paris' squad vying for a league title. Good dump down, and Garcia ends up with it. He's doing a great job, not only of getting those long rebounds, but just staying active right there in the middle of the paint. Missouri's offense the last six minutes is 0 for 4 with four turnovers. Carter. Lejac kicks it back out. Kurt Lewis had a tip. Active hands for the Aggies ahead to Coleman. And a big fellow run on the floor. This is not a team known for its tempo, but they corrected what worked well. For Missouri last game, they've been getting out and going, have the Aggies just 318th on the year tempo. But you want to know it's not. Bates can't end the run. It's 14-0 run for AM. This is an Aggies team and a coach, Buzz Williams, not short on motivations. The latest one is a dog bone. They all pose for a picture at the end of shoot around today holding a bone. The thought there is two dogs going after the same bone. You gotta win it, and they have Seemingly won every loose ball so far tonight and have nine offensive rebounds. Radford in the paint and Mazak couldn't hold his line. They're going to count it. It'll be a three point chance for Coleman. Texas AM has just done such a good job of putting their head down, getting to the paint, and yet again, another assist on the interior. This time, Radford. If he can add that to his game, because he's typically a guy that likes to go to the rim and attack, and, and that is good. But when he draws that defense, if he can keep looking for the big men sliding to that open spot, they should get some easy buckets given the attention that Radford can bring. Lewis takes his seat. Robinson replaces him. And Henry Coleman the third, who started his college career at Duke, can't cash in on the freebie. That was the eighth assist for Texas A&M. In league play, they're only averaging nine total. So they're sharing the ball much better getting open looks than we've seen them in league play. Eight on the shot clock. Robinson is fouled. 
by Jace Carter. Nice drive by Robinson. One of the challenges Dennis Gates told his team was, guys, when that ball comes to you, you have .5 seconds to make a decision. Pass, catch, dr or shoot, dribble, and that time Robinson with a quick decision to drive baseline. Wait, what were the options? Pass, shoot, dribble. Okay, you've already caught it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I corrected that one. <laughs> I, I got the catch out of the way. So here's Robinson Suppose with the free throw line. Yeah. You saw his teammate from high school, Trey Donaldson, on the floor for Auburn earlier tonight as the Tigers knocked off Alabama. They both played for Charlie Ward, Florida State University High School. And Trey was telling me that when Auburn comes to Mizzou later this season, Coach Ward, who was obviously a fantastic quarterback and basketball player at Florida State Heisman Trophy winner, is going to be here at the game. Robinson, what a legacy. This guy is the winningest player in Florida high school history. And all at the same high school. What an accomplishment because there are some great players and great winners coming out of the state of Florida. Yeah, 109 wins throughout his prep career. Shot clock is off. Aggies had a 16-0 run to take control. Here's Radford on base. Bradford back to the baseline. Oh, right. oh, right. <laughs> wow. And look who got it. A missed opportunity for the Aggies at the buzzer. But Missouri a season low for points and a half with only 25. And Anderson Garcia, your player of the game in the first half with only five points, but 11 boards, three assists. He has been a monster as AM has out rebounded Missouri by nine. Let's get to the studio. Here's Zubin. Career, but he is the perfect, you called him a glue guy in the first half. I think he's better than that. I just think he's got a skill set that's not generally appreciated because it doesn't have points next to his name. There's a lob. And back out to Carter. And then 43% from the floor. It's not a bad number for them considering the bulk of offensive rebounds they get. And that one came just a hair late and a shot clock violation. 14 points off of eight Mizzou turnovers. That's a huge advantage for AM. You're used to seeing the offensive rebounds lead to second chance points. That's no change. Yeah, on the offensive end for Missouri, they really weren't that bad when they got a shot off. It was those eight turnovers that really was the difference in that first half. Many of them of the live ball variety, too, leading to the easy fast break opportunity for Texas A&M. You saw the points in the paint difference. Aggies have had 10 makes at the rim, Missouri only two. Garcia commits a foul. Look, he can do something wrong. Where can Missouri find some offense? I think it's got to be with their defense. It, it, the half court is just going to be such a grind. If they can get consecutive stops on this end of the court, advance pass, kick it ahead, they've got capable three-point shooters. They've just been so inconsistent. And I think the best looks they'll be able to get is in transition. Honor pulls the trigger. He made one early. Wade Taylor is 0 for 2 from deep. He's averaging over 23 points a game in conference action. Radford gives it up. And an AM turnover. Fourth of the game for the Aggies. It's a really good pass. Missouri hasn't made a bucket since the 7.54 mark of the first half. Honor with a the floater. There you go. That's the second time he's been able to really penetrate the paint off that three-quarter press by Texas A&M. That's where they've gotten a couple good looks. Taylor from deep. Wow. Offensive rebound that time by Solomon Washington. This is an AM team as a, I'm speaking as a whole, not just Anderson Garcia, but they don't give up on offensive rebounds. They seem to have 
a feel for where the ball is coming. Yeah, but if you're Missouri, you say, guys, they're going to miss shots. They are not an efficient team whatsoever on the offensive end. You just have to try to box out on that end of the court, and you have a chance to come back in this game. Bates drills the three. Great job swinging the ball out of that double team in the post. As poorly as Missouri shot the ball in the first half and having a span of 10 minutes without a field goal, they're only down well, 10 now, but you get my point. Taylor's got eight. Kurt Lewis starting the second half as he did the first. Missouri is without starting guard and leading scorer Sean East. Suffered a knee injury in the Vandy loss on Saturday. Back to back buckets for Bates. That's a good job playing out of Noah Carter. When the other team's five man is on Carter, that usually means they have a good mismatch. Taylor lost it on the way in. Pinballs around and will stick with AM. Bates. Leading the freshman Jordan Butler. Bates has been around the game for a while, played at Piper High School in Kansas City, Kansas, before heading to IMG Academy during the COVID year. And was committed to Shaka Smart at Texas before Shaka moved. Started his career in Indiana before coming back to Mizzou. Pumped away by Kurt Lewis. And one for Lewis. And Missouri's got some momentum. Now that looks like Dennis Gates, Missouri Tiger basketball. Jump passing lanes, great offense from your defense, and get off to the races. Terrific job by Lewis, and a really difficult finish with some contact falling into the stands. You know, on top of your screen, Dennis Gates is telling, <laughs> telling Sean East, who's really been active on the bench, not playing tonight, Either you keep these guys on the bench or you're, you're going to have to leave because Doug Sermons just yeah. gave Missouri a warning over there. Sean can't control his energy. Well, you got to admire the energy, though, right? I mean, you're down, what, 13 and a half. You're 0-9 in league play, and you come out with that sort of fight, and you're having to calm your bench down. That's a good problem to have. Here's Lewis, who started his college career at Eastern Kentucky. There's a lot of teams that wouldn't have to worry about bench decorum. They'd be worried about bench boredom. And yeah. Missouri is, is in this thing. They're not looking at their record. They're just trying to get a win and fight to the end. Bodies colliding up front on the screen. Good D by Butler. AM gets it in the paint. A beautiful little jump hook from Wildens Levesque. He was one that was banging the drums after shoot around today. Missouri started this half hot four or five from the floor. Carter will go to the line, and that is the third on Wade Taylor, the fourth. Missouri's had a really nice tempo in this second half, just kicking it ahead and making quick decisions instead of being stagnant. I think one thing that's helped them a little bit, not just when they create turnovers, but so this three-quarter press by Texas A&M gives that Tigers a chance to, to really attack before Texas A&M can get back in the half court. Free throw differential was a huge difference in the first matchup this season two weeks ago in Aguilar, and it continues in this game tonight as Carter knocks one down. AM leads the league in attempts and makes, yet only shooting 67%. Last time, the Yankees went to the line 37 times. That's really hurt Missouri this year is their inability to get to the free throw line. And look, last year they had some weaknesses too. They didn't rebound extremely well. Uh, they didn't necessarily win the free throw battle, but they did so many other things at an elite level with their steals in the half court and their three point shooting that it covered up some of those weaknesses. Now that their strengths this year that they had last year are kind of in the middle of the pack, those weaknesses start to expose themselves more often. Radford dances his way down the lane. You talk about a tough two. 
That is where he makes his money. 46% shooting at the rim. Carter with the answer on the other side. Missouri found its offense at the break. Going to keep the Aggies off the boards, though. This is a good matchup for Carter. Garcia out, and there's really two five men in from Texas A&M right now. That helps Missouri in the half-court offense with Carter's versatility. Bradford downhill, no. And a foul will go against Missouri fighting for the rebound. It's Butler who commits his third. Meanwhile, Tamar Bates is leading the charge for this Missouri team. One of their best shooters is also one of their key leaders. We'll talk about his journey and what it means during Black History Brand All-Star. He was a Kansas player of the year. He had a decision to make. And he and his family talked about the opportunity to play for a black head coach and what that importance would be. Originally committed to Shaka Smart. When Shaka left Texas, and his recruitment opened back up, so he ends up playing in Indiana for Mike Woodson for a couple of seasons. Transfers to Missouri to play for Dennis Gates and talking to him about it today. He said, listen, all else being equal, why not? Why not play for a coach who understands me, who understands what my family background is and what's important to my family? Now, on top of that, he's also a great player. And his confidence that he's built by being an elite scorer during conference play is a 180 from the way his career started in Indiana, whereas a freshman, he just shot just 27%. He said, dude, scoring, shooting especially, is all about confidence. And his is sky high right now. It absolutely is. What a great decision it was for him to come play for Dennis Gates. Bates is looking to become the first player in Missouri history to have 50% from the field, 40% from three, and over 90% from the free throw line. And that only increases percentages with that tough take to the rim by Bates. Yes, seven of his ten coming in the second half. He's an elite free throw shooter. Coleman is banged up. Did he take a knee to the gut, or was it on the fall, I think is the question for Coleman. Eddie Benyon, the head athletic trainer, along with Buzz Williams, had to check out him. You know, and, and that was a rotation last year for Texas A&M that really rewarded them with so many charges. They took 61 charges last year. But with the new block charge rule that says you have to be set before the last foot is planted on the ground by the offensive player, they've gone from 61 last year to only 11 so far this season. And Coleman. Led the team in charges. You can see on that last replay exactly why he needs to catch a breather. Back to Bates for a moment. He, he is second in the country in free throw percentage. And he said, you know, speaking of former Missouri players, he played for Mike Dixon's dad in AAU ball. And he said, I want to shoot the ball well at the free throw line at the time. And Coach Dixon pulled me aside and he said, listen, only two things can happen when you go to the free throw line. You can mace it, you can either make it or you can miss it. So how about you just make the darn thing? And <laughs> it sounds really simple, but it completely changed my outlook and my confidence. And from then on, I just started making free throws. Noah Carter with the foul. I love it. Look, at a young age, too, when you can really start to lose confidence and you're worried about the crowd chanting brick or air ball, all that stuff. That's a very simple approach. And right now, He's one of the best free throw shooters in the country. And just six away from the program record, he's made 33 straight. If I'm not mistaken. Jason Sutherland holds the Mizzou record. Back in the mid 90s, Taylor took it to the floor. They say he got tripped. Majak had committed the foul on the play previously. And now he gets whistled for that one, which is the third on the seven footer from South Sudan. You rarely see Dennis Gates get emotional on the sidelines, but he did not like that call as he's doing his best to cooperate and stay in the coach's box. Might need to change that T-shirt to game night. Four-point A&M lead. Taylor working on honor. Carter finds the rebound. Missouri is happy going man on man and ball pressure. 
Tigers have a chance to make it a one possession game. We haven't seen that in the last 12 minutes of game action. There was a double and a skip. Bates has been hot. Extra pass to Carter and he stepped on the sideline. That's a corner there. You just cannot have a negative step at all when you catch and pivot and get ready to go. That happens, that negative step you talk about from a shooter or a driver happens way more than you would think, way more often. It really does. It's got to have that court awareness and, and practice it. That's got to be a side step or a forward. A little bump out front. It's a second charge to honor. Yeah, Wade Taylor just really good at drawing those fouls. That obviously not a shooting foul, but he gets to the free throw line six times a game. And when he feels a bump, he usually shoots it because he knows he's getting the whistle and sells it extremely well. It's a specialty for Buzz Williams' squad. He wants to get the bonus every half, and generally speaking, they do. But it's those little fouls that just add up and end up making it a free throw contest. Washington lost the shot. He lost his balance. First bucket for the New Orleans Knicks. Here's the 1 2 2 again. Honor from D. Oh, from Norm's autograph. He knocks it home. 14 for Nick Honor, and it's a one possession game. Radford into Majak, blocking foul on Mizzou, and Boots Radford will be going to the free throw line. Fourth on Majak. This has just been a different Missouri Tiger team here in the second half. They have started seven of eight. This is just too hard to guard. Gar Carter cuts off Taylor, and then you got to close out on Radford. That's what makes them so special. Normally, you take away one. Crafty penetrating guard, you've done your job against Texas AM. You got to do it multiple times with this backcourt. Another one coming for Radford. NBA Saturday primetime matchup on ABC and the ESPN app. Devin Booker and the Suns take on Steph and the Warriors at the Chase Center. Coverage set to NBA countdown at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. You watch Missouri basketball in the mid 90s, you would have thought the best Booker ever would have been Melvin. Son Devin, though, has surpassed him. Melvin Booker helped. Missouri to the Elite Eight and an undefeated run in conference play in 94. He was a good reserve player at Kentucky, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah his son decided to go to Kentucky to ride the pine. Yeah. It worked out pretty well for everybody involved. Well, they got seven NBA All-Stars. Yeah, 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 Cal told me the other Toppin day. in the dunk contest. There's that banner from 94, Big Eight champions. Cal told me the other day, he said, we got seven. I'm not going to rest until we have 12, which would be half of the world's greatest players <laughs> being former Kentucky players. It's a record for an NBA All-Star selection coming from one school. Bates deep in the corner. Honor for three. What you think of the shot selection? I think it's okay. He, he's in a nice rhythm this half. Got his feet set under him. He can make that. Taylor, floater. Garcia kicks it out. Radford around Shaw. It's really not the matchup they wanted. They, they wanted Honor to stay on Radford, and then when Shaw got on him, he just took him to the cup, lowered that shoulder. Tigers have made seven straight here in the second half. Honor. Got it. You said at shoot around today that usually when you miss a key player, somebody else steps up in their stead. No Sean East, but Honor already six points above his average. Yeah, it's, it's not sustainable for multiple games, but usually one game, they can rally around a player's absence. And right now, Missouri, boy, have they rallied. 
in the second half showing there is no quit in this Missouri Tiger team and Nick Honor the KG veteran 7 of 13 on the night better from three than two but you wouldn't know it watching this floater. I zoom and thanks. Yeah, I really I really feel for people who don't start watching college basketball either until March or until after the Super Bowl or until after the college football national championship. Whatever your deadline is, just move it up. You're welcome to watch now, in November. And how about did Carter pull from 40 with like 12 on the shot clock? Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's Radford has 16. This By the way, I appreciate your pitch for college basketball at the same time you're promoting SEC Saturday Night <laughs> Football. That's right. But you can wear both hats. I should wear a hat. Uh, Radford's got 17. He's the only player that 6'3 with 1,500 points and 750 rebounds. He is just an absolute machine. Here's Bates. That's up with Taylor. Quick hands, and he knocks it away. And Aggie Steele in a five on two. Just the second turnover for Missouri in this second half compared to eight in the first half. That's what allowed them to get back into this game. They must take care of it. Taylor got a step on Lewis, found Garcia, results in a foul on Carter. The breakdown started at 23 feet and ends at the rim. And that's just that complimentary bas basketball by this backcourt. You close out on Taylor, then he kicks it to Radford. Now you got to close out on him. Makes for a difficult assignment. That is the third on Noah Carter. Here's a look at bracketology. Joe Lenardi says Tennessee a two seed, maybe moving up, especially with what's happening with Carolina. That's coming in today. Tennessee with a win tonight against LSU. Auburn steadily climbing. You know, Bruce Pearl is an amazing coach, both with X's and O's, and he played for him in Tennessee, and with motivation. But one of his motivators over the years has been this old refrain of nobody believed in us, they didn't count on us, they, they think we're not good enough, that gets harder and harder to repeat when you knock off Alabama at home. Hey, they, he finds ways to motivate his team all the time. And part of who he recruits in the transfer portal are guys with a chip on their shoulder looking to recruit, recruit uh, and move up as opposed to a lateral move or a downward move. And that's where you see the aggressiveness Auburn Tigers play with. And, Boy, was that place on fire for a pretty hot Alabama team. Yeah. From 99. Now. And that, that's an improved Alabama defense. I mean, they, they've been playing some of their best defensive basketball of the season. Radford left the ball behind. Bates diving for it. Aggies keeping alive thanks to Garcia. But Garcia left the long touch pass outside. Three ball. What a look. Boots Radford with the triple and a timeout taken by Dennis Gates. This has been the Anderson Garcia show. I mean, what more can he do? This play embodies everything about Anderson Garcia. The first guy to the deck, the first guy off the deck, and then he's going to find himself in the paint with the perfect dime. Has a good shot for a great shot, and has changed the momentum here in the second half in favor of the Aggies. Never won a game coaching against Missouri. He was 0-2 as the head coach of Kansas against the Tigers. Well, I've never heard you say it, so repeat your best stuff. <laughs> That's right. Anthony Robinson on the floor for Missouri, freshman guard. And how quick was that 7-0 run over the last minute 20? The Radford three, but before that it was just four free throws by Texas A&M. Make this thing double digits once again. Bates guarded by Garcia in the corner. Oddly enough, that's where Missouri wants the basketball. Talk with Dennis Gates about their approach today. To either get an opposite corner or in the paint. Tigers with an offensive rebound to keep it alive. Carter ran into Garcia. Here's Butler. Garcia seven points 13 rebounds and four assists for number 11 and one Here he comes off for a screen Carter hops into the 
the paint, and they're going to count it. I just glanced over at Dennis Gates after that, and he had a look of disdain on his face with that was I wasn't sure the foul where the foul from. wasn't before the jump stop like right there I thought the foul but I guess he got hit a couple times on the jump stop and then that time and then they tried to mix it up they went man and then they tried to go zone in the middle of that defense but good job by Carter of not hesitating and just attacking regardless what defensive set Missouri was in here's Jace Carter played in Illinois Chicago last year second team all Valley performer. Thanks for the three point play. Missouri opened the half on a great run, but the Aggies responded. And it takes a lot of energy to come back the way they did. See if they have a second push in them. Bates, baseline move. 12 points for Bates, who grew up a Missouri fan. Man from Kansas City, big fan of the Rush brothers. Kareem was leading scorer in the Big 12 when he played here. A little floater goes for Wade Taylor. Locking foul on Garcia. Number two. Interesting talking with Buzz today about the tempo that he wants to run. They're 318th in the country, and he said, our guys know when to lay off the gas, apply the gas, or go for broke. And it's about taking the temperature of the game. Sometimes they know it, sometimes I have to help them with it, but we pick and choose when decided uh, upon game situation and personnel. And as an opponent, you go up against Texas A&M, the difficult part, if I'm a point guard, their defense looks the same every time you come down and you don't know if they're going to be in full speed mode with the gas pedal down halfway or playing a little bit off and a little bit of a prevent defense. So it keeps you guessing and off kilter as an opponent. Fifteen foul against say and in. Aggies are in the bonus. Missouri still has a couple to go to get there. Into the corner. And AM wins the game of Hungry Hungry Hippo. And then a foul in the backward on Robinson. 61 47. Do the Tigers have another run in? Bye, okay. right, guys. Thanks. Great to see Kim English doing well. Former Missouri Tiger. Led him from the transition from the Big 12 to the SEC. The series dates back to the first year of the Big 12 between AM and Missouri. Free throw coming for Jace Carter. And he's earned another one. First matchup between these two was 1969. AM leads the overall series 25 to 20. And they've met every season since the Big 12 was formed. And obviously continuing in the both of them joining the SEC at the same time. Largest lead for AM. Honor tried to skip it. Good hands by the Aggies. Mentioned it before, but that's part of Missouri's game plan. AM's yeah. just great at defending. Yeah, and Honor's really trying to save this Missouri offense. Four turnovers, unusual for him, but he's having to do so much more with Sean East unavailable in this game. East has been limited to the role of the observer tonight. I played Papa Shot with Sean East yesterday. Did you played Papa Shot growing up? I heard you didn't get destroyed either. I did not get destroyed. A little bit. Yeah. He gave me a 20 point spread, and I only lost by two. On talking ball with him, we'll share that feature later in the season. He credits that with his floater day, right? Yeah. So if my son says, "Dad, buy me a pop shot," so I'm working on floater. You ain't Shawnee, son. <laughs> that only works for some people. The Connors got 19. <laughs> 
season high points for honor. Taylor. By the way, when I was growing up, the Papa Shot Machine took quarters. They take bills now. <laughs> Inflation is out of control. Solomon Washington for three. Honor dishes the Bates. Full hand of steam and a beautiful finish. Let's see if Missouri has one last push in them. Try to get this thing to single digits if you can with that last media timeout going to this zone right now. See if Texas A&M, again, an inefficient team offensively. They'll miss some shots. Rebounded by Bates. Chance to push. Here's Lewis. Back to Carter for three. And those are the ones if you're Dennis Gates, you go, God, that's a good shot for us. A trailer three, pitch your eye back to him, open look. And Gates they just was have great. not been able to convert. He was great with a shot. He wasn't happy that the other guys in black didn't crash the boards. Timeout, Texas A&M, 14-point lead. We're back in 30 seconds. What Mark Sears has been doing for Alabama, Janai Broom for Auburn, Antonio Reeves has been phenomenal as a consistent scorer for Kentucky. But what Dalton Connect has done with some epic performances, especially on the road, has been just remarkable and historical, really, for that Tennessee program. 22 now for Radford on that beautiful pass from Garcia. Honor, ball fake, corner three. Taylor checks it down. Missouri in danger of falling to 0-2 in league play. Or pardon me, 0-10 in league play. And the Aggies hold on over the final five minutes. We go above 500 with Tennessee coming to town Saturday night. A little bit of space garnered by Washington before the shot. Washington with those two early fouls really in the first minute of this game did not play in the first half but has come in with a lot of energy here in the second. Bates gets it rejected by Garcia. He's just done everything for Texas A&M. It was a little odd at A&M shoot around today to see several players wearing sunglasses. I thought maybe it had been a long night at Harpo's but we find out later that it's another motivational ploy by Buzz being our future is bright. Credit to my cousin Corey Hart. They're wearing the shades inside. Taylor chatting with the cheerleaders. Looks like it's all good, I think. How many different props did we see today? Yeah, so the sunglasses, the dog bone. Yeah, there were a lot of things going on. Um, They've got several T-shirts that have different slogans. That they're always finding a, a motivational speech. But I tell you one thing: you don't need any any gimmicks on. Is this guy at the free throw line right now? I don't know that there's another point guard that has more trust from his head coach than this guy. He can take some quick, questionable shots, but man, does Buzz Williams trust Wade Taylor with the ball in this Aggie offense? He is number two in the country. In scoring against top 25 teams, he's averaging 27 points a game against ranked opponents this season. And at six feet, you got to have that swagger and confidence. That's what's got him this far. A guy that was not heavily recruited, but Buzz Williams saw something in Ford White that others might not have, and he's been outstanding for that. It's a third on Solomon Washington. Boots Radford and this Aggie team taking advantage of Anderson Garcia's big day. Assist number 11. Hands to dominate the glass. Seven points, 15 boards, but they beat you in all types of ways. Best in the country, getting over 40% of their missed shots. Carter fouled on the way in, so he's got an N1 coming, and it's out by Jace Carter, no relation. We talked with Buzz about that skill set today and talked a little college basketball history. Dean Smith was at North Carolina in the late 70s. The Tar Heels didn't really have a true big man. So that was a staple of Dean's teams really from that point forward. If you can't get it, tip it to your teammate, usually offensively, but they were so good at it. They would do it 
That, those Carolina teams on the defensive end as well. Well, the other key to it is teammates are expecting it. I mean, for Texas A&M, they got guards in the backcourt who are either ready to get back on defense or waiting for that ball to be batted out to them. And they just destroy teams with the extra possessions. I mean, they have 13 more field goal attempts than Missouri does. And that's why they're able to overcome their inefficient shooting is because they get more shots than you and they get to the strike. Garcia dumps it down low, gets it back, and gets tied up. Garcia leading the team tonight in rebounds, blocks, and assists. And to your point, on average, they get eight more field goal attempts than their opponent. That's on average. They've increased that tonight. Now the only question remaining, 73-54, is if you're going to get the Bobs, Bobs, at Murray's. I'm following your lead tonight. There you go. That's the right we've answer. Identified it it, we've identified a few places up until 11, so we're good. Barring a 19-point scoring spree here. Bates blows the bunny. Garcia, 15 boards, his career high is 19. The 90 at 19 against Houston Christian, nine offensive rebounds. Taylor Leaner, 16. All right, let's pay it forward for AM. They've got a true test coming to Reed Arena on Saturday night. Now, they already knocked off Kentucky at home in overtime, and then they get Tennessee coming. Bates got fouled hard. They'll be ready to play. That play should be sold out as well. Take, uh, Tennessee, an extremely physical team. And that'll be one where Texas a and is going to have to get to the free throw line. But Tennessee, that, that's a team that as much switching that Texas A&M does, you got a game plan. And what I've seen a lot of coaches do around the league, one reason Lamont Paris has been so successful too, when teams like to switch a lot, they do some action before the actual play. Like, how can we create a switch and then get the advantage we want and go to work? Dennis Gates taking a timeout and talking with Doug Sermons and this officiating crew. We've got a women's basketball doubleheader for you tomorrow night right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. It's number one South Carolina, the only undefeated team left in Division I, playing host Missouri at 7 Eastern. That has been a great rivalry on the women's side, but with uh, Sophie Cunningham off to the pros, a little, maybe fewer elbows than they used to be. And then LSU and Vandy, 13th ranked Tigers on the road to take on Vanderbilt with Angel Reese. That's an historic memorial gym in Nashville. Should be a great night of hoops. You know what I loved about Don Staley recently? She was on the broadcast as a guest with Roy Philpott and Jimmy Dykes the other night. And she showed up to the men's game about five minutes later, and she usually does. She goes, yeah, I'm sitting up there and my seat was taken down here. And she's like, well, snooze you lose, I guess. That, like, she most people are like, yeah, seat. most people are like, hey, that's my seat, but not her. She's like, well, I should have showed up sooner. I, I did not get a chance to watch that broadcast, but did she confirm that she stormed the floor when South Carolina beat Kentucky a couple of weeks ago? <laughs> I did not hear that part. I know she was ready, though. Here's Bates at the free throw line. Five off of the Mizzou record held by Jason Sutherland. Told the story earlier what his AU coach said. You get two choices you can make or, or miss. You, you might as well make the darn thing. And he has followed through with that. He's closing in on Brian Grower's record for free throw percentage in a single season here at Missouri. Sons of coaches have always been great free throw shooters, haven't they? Yep. Dad, wish you were a coach. <laughs> would help. Oh, Basicki with a fadeaway. Aiden Shaw, the rebound, two minutes to play here. Carter running the floor. That was a great pass. On well, for Missouri, Tom, it, look, there was proof of concept for sure in year one. Dennis Gates in this system works. And they've had injuries, they've had departures, but not only will they have some guys coming back next year, but they have the number four ranked class in the country. That ties the best in school history, the Michael Porter Jr. class. 
Honor Boating, who's the Gatorade Arkansas Player of the Year. Not one, but two seven-footers. Mm. Peyton Marshall, Trent Burns. So more talent is on the way for this Missouri team that's just been riddled by injuries this year and, and unable to just get a, a full squad together. A cylinder call on Solomon Washington. Which Radford's got a 22.9. All smiles on the AM bench. They've had a couple of guys who may have to change rows in the choir. Last two games, she's been magnificent 48 points. Nine of those coming from the free throw line. 26 in the win against Florida, in which AM was down 13 in the first half. It's a third time this season AM has rallied from a halftime deficit. It's been a little bit of an up and down year for Radford, but he is playing the best basketball of the season right now in back to back games. And I'll admit, I had Texas A&M in my preseason as, as number one. I thought they would win the conference because of the backcourt with what I saw from Radford and Taylor. They lost Julius Marble to start the season, which affected their, their front court, but they have moved on there with other guys stepping up. If there's such a thing as being automatic at the free throw line, belongs to Tamar Bates. Now 37 consecutive. That's unbelievable. He said knocking on the door of that program record. Lawrence shakes free for a three. Hayden Hefner with the putback. Yeah, and that's an example Right there. Levesque didn't go after that ball with two hands. He knew he couldn't get it, so he just tips it up in the air to try to create another rebounding opportunity. That time Hefner, the beneficiary. One minute to play. Missouri will fall to 0 and 10 in conference play. This will be the 13th loss in the last 14 games. And the Aggies will now have won four out of five as they welcome top five Tennessee to town. Saturday night. Blocked by Carter. Quickly handicapped AM versus Tennessee for Yeah, Tennessee being so physical and having that size down low, I'll be surprised if Texas AM reaches their season averages in terms of offensive rebounding, given how good defensively Tennessee has been as a complete team. Eli Lawrence with his first bucket. And a push ahead to Carter. Going back to that matchup, though, Tom. I mean, it's the, the consistency there, I think you're starting to see with Tennessee. Dalton Connect with that win at Rupp that you had. It wasn't just Connect, it was the balanced offense. So it'll be interesting to see who the Aggies assign on Dalton Connect, knowing they switch a bunch. It's going to be a team effort, but a huge opportunity for the Aggies, who have now played pretty well back to back. Mizzou gets back to back home games. Mississippi State battling Georgia tonight will be here Saturday night on the SEC Network. A primetime matchup. 19 point win for Texas AM. The Aggies improved to 14 and 8. As the squad goes above 500 in conference play, Mizzou will hit the weekend looking for its first conference win. Well, we're used to the guards scoring about 50% of their team's points, and that's exactly what happened. But they were outshined tonight by Anderson Garcia with 16 rebounds, 7 points, and every hustle play imaginable. For Dane Bradshaw, I'm Tom Hart. Thanks for being with us tonight. Enjoy Sports Center next. Tom and Dane, thank you very much.